Hello, yes, it's me, I'm back. Uh, and with a new name. Uh, this name is to convey that I am now going to be doing more Vermont history videos as I am once again returned to my home state of Vermont. However, it will not be exclusively Vermont history videos. I don't want to exclude people, but, you know, hopefully the next few will be at least. I have a good amount to go through. Uh, beginning with my video on Song of the Vermonters, 1779, also known as the Green Mountaineer. Uh, both names are used. Uh, if you play Hearts of Iron 4, I believe Kaiserreich now uses this song in some instances. I don't know. I haven't played a Paradox game since CK2, and that was several years ago. Um, however, this is a poem and then later song by John Greenleaf Whittier, an American poet wittier than most. Okay, that terrible pun. But I was originally going to do this video explaining the entire song, and then as I went into it, I realized that I had a fun diversion to go on, and so this is going to cover a portion of the first stanza, and I'm going to go into greater depth about that and not do the whole song. Uh, now, here's where I get to decide whether I sing it or read it. As you know from my shanty videos, I have a beautiful singing voice. So I'm going to just read it regularly. And if you want to hear the song, you can just Google Song of the Green Mountaineer, Song of the Vermonters, either one. It'll come up and listen to it. But the first stanza goes, Ho all to the borders, Vermonters come down, with your breeches of deerskin and jackets of brown, with your red woolen caps and your moccasins come to the gathering summons of trumpet and drum. Come down with your rifle, let gray wolf and fox howl on in the shadow of primitive rocks. Let bear feed securely from pig pen and stall, here's two-legged game for your powder and ball. And I have to read it when I'm not singing it. When I sing it, I know all the words, but just stating it, I have to read it right here. Um... So I'm gonna go to the middle of that. Let gray wolf and fox howl on in the shadow of primitive rocks. Let's talk about wolves. Now I'm ready to talk about the pursuit of wild game. Those of you familiar with the wildlife of North America may be confused about my speaking of wolves in Vermont as wolves are not currently on the Eastern seaboard. Well, Vermont isn't either, but close enough. You get what I'm saying. Wolves were, however, until the mid-1800s. The exact year isn't known because, of course, we know the last time people got wolves in certain areas, but they could have had so few that they died out in the woods without the last one being killed by a hunter. Not important. What is important, however, is that... Ten years after this poem was originally written, the poem was originally written in 1828, the community around Seymour Lake gathered for a community wolf hunt. In the fall of 1838, wolves were ravaging the sheep population on Elon Hill. A group of 200 men and boys gathered to deal with the problem. Now, these men did not just come from the town of Morgan, as indicated by this side of the line, as Morgan only had a population of around 400 at the time, and not every single man and boy was fit for the hunt. And since Charleston is so close to Elon Hill, with technically a portion of it being in Charleston, just like Seymour, technically the tip is in Charleston, men from Charleston also came, as wolves tend to migrate and wouldn't just stay on this hill, they would enter Charleston eventually. They gathered to deal with the wolf problem. They knew they could use the geography to their advantage, seeing the nearly sheer face of the hill on the eastern side. The men decided to push the wolves to the point of the lake. Now in this push, by midday, they'd begun. By nightfall, they'd shot three wolves. However, knowing there were more, they stayed the night. 
During the night, they heard howling from atop the hill, meaning some wolves had gotten past them. They then entered a night hunt in which they captured three more wolves. To this day, the point where they got the original three is known as Wolf Point. Man, this is hot. The men decided that as this had been a group effort, each man and boy who participated in the hunt would receive an equal share of the reward. The reward being the money from the sale of the wolf pelts and the government bounty that was paid for each of the six wolves killed. Uh, the government would continue this policy for a bit, plus with private reasons to kill wolves, i.e. more sale of wolf pelts and also I don't like them killing my livestock, the American gray wolf would be pushed to the edge of extinction until preserved in Yellowstone Park. Uh, not exactly relevant. Well, it's relevant. I'm not going to go into it. Um, this is a great story of community, and I'm going to finish it off with... So, earlier in the video, I mentioned that in the mid-1800s, the gray wolf would be gone from all of New England. New England would then go nearly a hundred years without any predatory canines, as foxes are technically not canines. It wouldn't be until sometime in the 1940s that there would be predatory canines in the wilds of New England again, this being the coyote who had since crossed the Mississippi and was now and still is a predator that fulfills nearly the same role as the wolf once did. In fact, as I sat on my porch last night, I heard the howl of coyotes coming from over the crest of that very hill. Well, there you go. I was able to combine history of the song and a portion of Charleston history. So I guess this counts in two categories. Hopefully one category just beginning of continuing this song. Uh, see you soonish. And remember, cheer, cheer, the Green Mountaineer.